we're going to get to this uh, second crucial update. We're going to turn to Zaporizhia, the nuclear power plant, and warnings about the risks there. It is, of course, the largest plant in Europe. And the head of the UN's nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, says the security situation around the plant is extremely fragile because of continued military activity in the region. Our reporter Courtney Bembridge is in the newsroom and talks us through the concerns. This is Europe's biggest nuclear power plant. It's been occupied by Russia for more than a year. Both sides accuse the other of repeatedly shelling it. Before the war, Zaporizhia provided about 20% of Ukraine's electricity and it was still operational until September last year when power production was stopped. There are now concerns that heavy fighting around the plant could lead to a severe nuclear accident. And this picture was published earlier this month by a local Ukrainian official who said it shows people leaving the nearby towns. He said Russia had caused a mad panic by telling people they needed to evacuate. While shelling is one concern, the other is about overheating nuclear fuel, which would happen if the power that drives the cooling systems here is cut off. And we've already seen that happen several times. In those instances, the plant was able to rely on backup diesel generators, but if they were to fail, it could be disastrous. This is the warning from the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi. There have been seven occasions when the site lost all of site power and had to rely on emergency, on emergency diesel generators, which is, as you know, the last line of defense against a nuclear accident to provide essential cooling of the reactor and spent fuel. The last one, the seventh, occurred just one week ago. We are fortunate that a nuclear accident has not yet happened. Another concern is lack of staff. Before the war, there were around 11,000 people working at the plant. It's now thought that number could be as low as 3,500. And these are the people that maintain those backup generators that are essential to preventing a full meltdown. So all of this adding to concerns about the plant and adding to calls for it to be demilitarised immediately. And you saw Rafael Grossi there, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency. And I'm pleased to say we can uh, say hello and speak to him now. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. My pleasure. Thank you very much. So how worried are you right now? Well, we have been worrying for, for more than a year, actually. Uh, but uh, as, as you were describing and as your reporting shows, the situation is not improving. Now we are in the midst of uh, what has been announced as a, a counteroffensive or preparations there, thereof. Um, and this is what uh, prompted me to, to multiply my diplomatic uh, consultations. And I was yesterday, um, as I think was just shown in New York at the Security Council, where I explained the, the, the situation and I laid out uh, five basic uh, principles that should be observed by all to avoid uh, a nuclear accident. Well, well, Mr. Grossi, let's look at some of those principles now. We may not get, get to all of them, but let's look at uh, some of them now. We can show uh, the first couple on screen now. The first one, no attack against the plant or launched from the plant. Uh, I don't think we need to elaborate on that. That's pretty self-explanatory and pretty worrying. The plant should not be used for the storage of heavy weapons is one of your principles. Talk to me about that. Are your, is it your opinion that Russia, which is of course in control of the plant, is storing weapons there? Not, not, not that we have seen it, but there has been a lot of speculation about that. And of course, with this uh, possibility of major uh, military operations, um, uh, I thought it was very important to establish clearly that uh, a nuclear power plant should never be a place where you put this type of systems, which would um, uh, sort of sanctuarize it in order to be used to project force or, or seen from the other side could make a military target of it. So uh, the principles, as you have seen, are very clear, crystal clear. We are not, you know, uh, into 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 nice words. We are exactly describing what needs to be um, avoided. This is why I included it as one of the main 
things to avoid. I see. Right, let's take a, a look at a couple more things that, that you mentioned. Yeah. Power to the plant should not be put at risk. And uh, that's what our reporter was just describing as well. Another thing, there must be reliable communication uh, with the regulator and others. So let's pick up on, on a couple of those. First, this, this idea of power to uh, the plant itself. Why is that yeah. so important? That, that seems exactly, it's an interesting point because sometimes people think about nuclear power plants as places where you produce <laughs> energy and you put it on, on a grid. Uh, and why is it so important to, to receive um, uh, power? Well, this is uh, crucial uh, because you have a very important cooling function. You know, nuclear reactors, when the nuclear reaction is produced and they are uh, uh, producing uh, energy, they are operating at uh, uh, hundreds of the degrees temperature. They need to be cooled constantly. And when you lose this cooling function, then it's basically what happened in, in Fukushima, where you lose the, the cooling, and then, of course, you, you have a meltdown, explosions, etc. So what has happened, this is actually one of the, the most um, dangerous thing, it has happened uh, seven times already, seven times, the last, the last one, la only last week, um, where the plant lost all feed from the from the the grid um, and and therefore it had to be cooled through uh, emergency generators and presumably um, that can't that can't carry on because the more times that uh, happens the higher the exactly risk. and that's the last line of defense you know it's it's the it's the last resort that you have and it is only as good as the the amount of petrol or whatever um uh, fuel you put into in, into those so it's unstable it's it's not not sustainable okay. and it should never um, it should never happen mr Gross, we have to talk about the staff uh because there are lots of concerns about the numbers of staff there operating it uh, falling and the stress they're under. This is a place that under normal circumstances would be operated by around 12,000 people. Now we are reduced to a few thousand, maybe between 2,000 and 3,000 people. Um, uh, the, the situation is more or less manageable because at the moment, because of the war and the circumstances, the plant is not producing electricity for uh, Ukraine or for Russia. Um, uh, so uh, this minimal level of staffing can only be uh, acceptable in these circumstances. But it is very, very, we are working on very thin ice here. And what, and, and what is your relationship with Russia like? Well, it's a, it's a relation based on practical need. They are in charge. They are in control of the operation there. So we, we and must... And are they giving you full information? They, they are. They are. There are, of course, we are, as, as an agency of inspectors and experts, we are asking to see and to check as much as we can Sometimes we have issues. We try to resolve them. Um, so it's it's uh, it's not an easy situation. It's not a normal situation, and uh, in any in any way. Okay. And just before I let you go, Mr. Rossi, one last question on a line, a news line that's just come into us here. So I'm reading this for the first time as I'm uh, talking to you about it. The IAEA, which of course is your body. Uh, says Iran's decision to stop implementing its commitments under the 2015 nuclear deal has seriously affected its verification and monitoring of Iran's nuclear program. So the IAEA estimates that Iran's total enriched uranium stockpile has grown by 983 kilograms since uh, February. Yeah. What's your reaction? Well, to that? this 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 is part of the of 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 this ongoing situation we have, which is again very very unstable. You know that there was an agreement, JCPO, the so-called JCPOA, that was uh, the United States withdrew uh, from it, in, and Iran retaliated by ceasing to observe all the obligations in it. So basically, what we have is an empty shell. Uh, there, has, there have been efforts to revive it. So far, these efforts have not uh, proven successful. And so we have a situation where, where Iran is 
moving on with this nuclear program. The agency is present there. We are inspecting as much as we can, but of course, at a reduced level. The, one of the important uh, aspects of that um, agreement was that it was giving the agency higher degrees of visibility and inspection commensurate with the dimension of this nuclear program. Now, now uh, we've lost it, and this is what is leading to a situation which is um, uh, less uh, predictable as, uh, than, than, than it was and, and, and uh, concerns around the world. We are working with Iran. We are trying to uh, make them be as cooperative as, as they possibly can. But it's Ra not easy. Rafael Grossi, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.